The Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, has now announced that Southern African Development Community Cited Forces will be deployed in the country in a few days. Moses Heavy Every Manor report. Last Friday, the presidency of DRC announced that President Felix Antoine Shisekedi officiated at the signing of an agreement between DRC and the Southern African Development Community to deploy their forces in the Congo. According to Kinshasa, SADC, a regional bloc of 16 countries, will deploy its troops with the mission of supporting the Congolese army in combating the M23 rebels and other armed groups. DRC President Felix Shisekedi, during an interview with the French media, accused Rwanda of being the root cause of the instability. He says that M23 is an empty shell and that they are really Rwandan defense forces who are fighting. He says that his government has all the proof and images of their presence. Kigali has repeatedly denied the allegations. Rwanda's government spokesperson told VOA's James Batty that the deployment of another regional force does not address the root cause of what she calls a long-standing security and government failure of the DRC government. Kinshasa has delayed the renewal of the mandate of the East African Committee Regional Forces, which is set to expire in December. The signing of the deployment of SADC forces has sent mixed signals. Peter Matuki is the Secretary General of the East African Community. The restoration of peace and security in Eastern DRC was decided by the members of the summit will be done through two trucks, the political truck and military truck. Military truck is now the presence of the East African Regional Force. The second truck, which is the political truck, is being handled by a facilitator who was appointed last year. According to the East African community, a report from the facilitator, Kenya's former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, will be handed to the heads of state summit, which is expected to take place on Friday in Arusha, Tanzania. Dr. Karen Tanda is a political science professor at the University of Kinshasa. Not a single foreign forces will bring peace to the DRC. DRC will have to organize herself, to organize her army, to organize her security, to defend herself. So SADC won't make any difference at all. Last Friday, President Shisekedi had an online meeting with the President of Kenya and Uganda, William Ruto, and Yoweri Museveni on the security situation in DRC. Despite the resumed conflict in the eastern part of DRC, the country is expected to hold general... Liberians in and outside of Liberia are welcoming the concession speech of incumbent President George Weah following his defeat to opposition leader Joseph Boakai in the country's November 14 runoff election. Dennis Nepsen reports from Monrovia. The National Elections Commission of Liberia, also known as NEC, will today, Monday, officially declare the winner of the vote. Incumbent President George Weah of the Coalition for Democratic Change, CDC, on Friday accepted defeat and congratulated former Vice President Joseph Boakai of the United Party, UP. The results announced tonight, though not final, indicate that Ambassador Joseph Nima Buaka is in a league that we cannot surpass. A few moments ago, I spoke with President-elect Joseph Nima Buaka to congratulate him on his victory. Tonight, as we acknowledge the result, let us also recognize that the true winners of these elections are the people of Liberia. Saturday's provisional results announced by the NEC showed Bwaka at 50.64% and we are at 49.36%. Some Liberians have been speaking to VOA about the outcome of the election and President's We Are Concession statement. Amos Mo says although he is not a supporter of the CDC, President Weah's acceptance of the results is a good sign that Liberia democracy is getting stronger. To wear from Ontinida in Africa is very difficult. To see your president accept it is very difficult in Africa to be real. It shows that our democracy is improving on a daily basis. But at peace we all went there and the president has done it for us. So 
actually I must applaud him, even though I'm not a physician, but what he did, wow. I'm so surprised. I'm shocked. Another citizen, Isaiah Boto, says progressives should get credit for the trouble-free polls and peaceful transfer of power. He especially pointed to the influence of a lit leader in Liberia's multi-party system and creator of the Progressive Alliance of Liberia in 1975. The very first thing I felt that was good is that our democracy have grown to an extent that we are able to stand. And at the counting period, I started retrospecting the days of G. Bacchus Matthew and the rest of the patriarch that fought to bring about democracy. Meanwhile, President-elect Joseph Boakai has yet to make an accepting speech. For VOA's Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsing in Morovia, Liberia. An estimated 1.3 million people die each year across the world because of road traffic crashes. According to the World Health Organization, between 20 and 50 million more people suffer non-fatal injuries with many incurring disabilities because of their accidents. Maureen Ojiambo reports. Road traffic injuries cause considerable economic losses to individuals, their families, and to countries. A new United Nations report indicates that road traffic injuries are now the leading killer of people aged 5 to 29 years, costing countries 3% of their gross domestic product. Etienne Krug is the director of the Department for Social Determinants of Health at the World Health Organization. He says countries are still struggling to improve road safety despite actions taken by the organization. We've been working on road safety for a while now at the global level, and I think we have improved awareness, we have improved uh, the desire to take action, and in some countries we really see action. But unfortunately, we're still at 1.3 million deaths every year on our roads. Road traffic crashes continue to be the leading cause of death for young people in almost every country around the world. The UN says road fatalities are closely linked to poor infrastructure, unplanned urbanization, limited road safety literacy, and persistent inequalities both within and between countries. WHO says driving under the influence of drugs, distracted driving, unsafe vehicles, and inadequate law enforcement of traffic rules are the major causes of accidents on the roads. Krug says age is not a major problem when it comes to accidents on the roads. The major problem is excessive speeding, drink driving, non-use of seat belts or, or a motorcycle helmets, the lack of infrastructure that is appropriate for uh, vulnerable road users. Those are the bigger uh, issues that can be solved. More than 90% of road traffic deaths occur in low- and middle-income countries. Road traffic injury death rates are highest in the African region. In Africa, traffic deaths account for about one quarter of the global number of victims, even though the continent has barely two percent of the world's vehicle fleet. In countries like Kenya, the number of accidents this year has increased by four percent compared to the same period last year. The chairperson of Kenya's National Transport Safety Authority, Agnes Odhiambo, says the country has embarked on campaign to teach drivers how to reduce accidents as the festive Christmas season approaches. The WHO says more than half of all road traffic deaths are among vulnerable users, pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. The WHO calls on member states, the private sector and the civil society to implement measures that will help reduce traffic deaths and ensure vehicle safety. For VOA Africa, I am Maureen Ojiambo in San Francisco. A series of attacks in Abiye, a disputed region between Sudan and South Sudan, has left 32 people dead, including women, children and a peacekeeper, local officials said. The attacks carried out on Sunday in two countries by armed militias and soldiers wearing South Sudanese army uniforms were condemned by a government representative from Abiye, an oil-rich oil territory on the border between the two countries. During these attacks, 32 people were killed, including children and women, burnt to death in their huts, and more than 20 people were injured, said Bal Scotch, Agual Minister of Information for Abiye and South Sudanese spokesman for the region in a statement issued on Sunday evening.
South Sudan has called for an urgent investigation into these barbaric attacks on civilians. Located between Sudan and South Sudan, the Abia region has been a flashpoint since the South gained independence in 2011. Earlier this month, a UN regional envoy expressed fears that fighting between rival factions vying for power in Sudan was moving closer to the border with South Sudan and Abiyye. The proximity of the fighting to Abiyye risks destabilizing this already fragile region while the ongoing crisis in Sudan has effectively suspended Talks between the two countries on this long disputed territory warned Hana. Tetek, the UN's special envoy to the Horn of Africa in Sudan, the conflict that broke out on 15th April between the head of the army, General Abdel Fatal al burhan and his deputy turned rival, General Mohammed Hamdan Dagaru, has left more than 10,000 people dead, according to the estimate by the NGO Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, which is considered to be greatly underestimated.